All right, welcome back in here to Live Now from Fox. I am Andy Mack. Let's talk about another top headline today as the Blue Origin New Glen rocket went smoke and fire. Obviously, a little bit of uncertainty after it got washed out, scrubbed due to weather, and then also then space weather. And it was a successful launch for Blue Origin today in this twin mission to Mars. Let's take you out to the culminating moment, the final 10 seconds before launch, because it's so very impressive to see. That was the launch of Blue Origin earlier on today. Of course, it would land a little bit, the booster would, a little bit later on because, of course, this is the tweet, the post on social media from Blue Origin. The booster did touch down as well. A New Glenn returns to its Blue Origin. Let's continue on here on Live Now from Fox and bring in from Space.com, Michael Wall. Thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. I know you were watching it as so many people were. This got scrubbed a couple times, a little uncertainty. They had some success back back in January, but we didn't know if this would happen again. What was that moment like, and what does this sense to you for Blue Origin? Yeah, this 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 was a huge moment for Blue Origin. I mean, like you said, I mean, New Glenn is the, it, this was, this is only like the second launch for it. It's their first orbital rocket. You know, they've, they, they've been flying like a suborbital space tourism vehicle called New Shepard for a decade or so. But this is the rocket that they're pinning all of their kind of orbital and and like beyond orbit dreams on. You know, they they have plans to help NASA get astronauts to mop, to to get, get to the moon and stuff like that on with the Artemis program, um, and they have plans to even go beyond that to to Mars maybe. And it kind of rests on on New Glenn's shoulders. So to see it like fly today on its second ever launch and it's it's its first launch with like real payloads. You know that January test flight was just a test flight. And to see it ace everything, to see it send the two NASA Mars probes on their way, and then to see the the first stage come back down for a landing on a ship at sea, which is something we've only ever seen from SpaceX. You know, it's like it, it was a really big day for Blue Origin. They're they're all extremely pleased, and they were they're they're now thinking about like what the future might hold, what other missions they might be able to fly with New Glenn, and um, yeah, they've got a lot of reason to be excited. Yeah, and this is kind of the, the booster landing there in the Atlantic Ocean. So successful, you mentioned SpaceX, really the only other company out there that does this as it comes down, makes this landing. And this is almost more impressive. Can you talk about this? Because we talk about the reusability of some of these rockets, and that is what SpaceX is really relying on, just the ability to kind of send up so many rockets so very fast. How important yeah. is the landing component to this, the fact that they were able to not just go smoke and fire, but they were able to bring one back. Yeah, it's really, really big. I mean, every one of, of these new Glenn first stages is designed to fly like at least 25 times. Um, so, you know, and that's a huge cost savings for Blue Origin and for, for their customers if, if it's able to work like that. You know, we've, we've like seen that kind of, that kind of reusability from SpaceX. They've, they've got Falcon 9 first stages that have flown 30 times. Um, so they are, they've been like the kind of pioneers in this, but that's, that's a path that, that, that new Glenn wants to tread now that, 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 yeah, that like blue origin wants to tread now. And this is the first step they've, they've got a long way to go. Obviously they got to keep flying these things, keep them, I mean, keep catching them, keep refurbishing them, keep reusing them. Um, but yeah, you know, there, this is the first time for that. And that's a really big moment. If, if, if they are able to reach those, those levels of, of reuse, then yeah, they, they, they will be. Yeah, they'll be doing really big things in the space flight industry. Yeah, that is so very true. And you mentioned, obviously, SpaceX, Elon Musk. They are competitors, but they're also somewhat working together on social media. Elon Musk saying congrats to Jeff Bezos, of course, the head of Amazon, head of this Blue Origin team and the Blue Origin team. In terms of this, how much is it competition to say it? How much is it one company pushing each other more so? Well, yeah, there, there, there kind of was a competition between the two maybe 10 years ago or so. But, you know, the, what we've seen since then is kind of SpaceX distancing themselves from the pack, not not just from Blue Origin, but from like the rest of the world. Basically, they they are by far like the launch leaders. They've flown more than 100 and 
you know, what, like 140 orbital missions this year already, just one company, and that's just like absurd. So they're, they're in a whole nother stratosphere from the rest of the world. But I like I think that the that the congratulations is sincere. You know, people posture a lot on social media. There there might be some element to that, but the congratulations. But I also think Elon Musk really does want humanity to get to Mars. And he said that's why he founded SpaceX more than 20 years ago. I think he is he is sincere about that. And I also think he's sincere about wanting there to be more possibility for that to happen. And anytime a big, powerful new rocket like this comes online, this thing's 320 feet tall, New Glenn, um, and can haul a lot of payload. So anytime a new rocket comes online that can help with that kind of overall quest, I think it, yeah, I mean, I think he probably is happy about it. Yeah, I think the general public and obviously the American public can see this and just the fascinating nature of it as one really on top of each other. I do want to ask you about this mission in particular, the new Glenn rocket, obviously sending these twin on a mission to Mars, potentially going to the L2 area. Can you give me some specifics on what this mission is all about? Yeah, it's 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 a low cost NASA mission. Escapade is is what it's called. It's it it like uses two Mars orbiters. Basically, they'll they'll fly to Mars and they'll yeah you know, they'll study space weather around Mars and how like the solar wind, which is like the 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 kind of the, the yeah the, the kind of stream of charged particles that's flowing constantly from the sun, how that interacts with Mars, this atmosphere, and helps kind of strip it away. And so like the goal is to um to help us understand how Mars, which used to have oceans and rivers and streams, kind of lost its atmosphere billions and billions of years ago. So, but yeah, yeah, I mean, you mentioned they aren't going straight to Mars. And that's because we're not in a window where they can go straight to Mars. Earth and Mars only align every 26 months for for an efficient kind of kind of path from Earth to Mars. And that that next window doesn't open until next November. So what what just happened today? Those those two escapade probes launched toward L two, which is this like gravitationally stable spot about a million miles from Earth, and they're they're going to stay there in kind of this looping orbit around that spot for about a year, and they'll 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 do some you know they'll take some measurements of space weather and stuff. But then in November of twenty six, they'll loop back around Earth and get a gravity assist from our planet, and then head to Mars. And then they'll they'll go into orbit around Mars and make all their measurements. So this was also kind of a unique aspect of this mission. Like we haven't seen that before, where you can like kind of launch to Mars outside of that transit window. And they're 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 doing this kind of like unique trajectory that like other missions could potentially do down the road if if this works out for them. I love the term the cosmic balance point that is kind of going to send them potentially to Mars in the next iteration. Uh, I want to ask you what comes next because we talk about it. I think it was a ULA launch uh, potentially yesterday. There's just so much in terms of space flight. Obviously, sending these rockets up. What comes next in terms of what's Blue Origin? What's on their next? a docket i think well they're 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 always kind of looking toward the next like new shepherd launch you know that's that's the space tourism and the, that, that vehicle that takes that takes folks to suborbital space they've probably got another one of those coming up relatively soon but i like i think now they're probably thinking about what's next for yeah for new glenn they're they like need to fly again, I think, to get it fully certified for um, national security missions, which will be a big deal if they can use this rocket to kind of launch U.S. spy satellites and kind of military communication satellites. That'll be a huge deal for them. And yeah, they they just want to get more and more New Glenn launches under their belt. They want to get more of, of these rocket landings under their belt and just get this thing flying more and more often. Um, they're also building like their own big, big constellation of, of you have like broadband satellites, you know, like, like SpaceX's Starlink, they're, they're, they're building their own version of that. And they're going to use New Glenn to kind of launch a lot of those satellites too. So they have a, they have big plans for this rocket. They just need to get it flying more and more often. So. Yeah, we've seen it time and time again here alive now, SpaceX sending different satellites up into orbit for that uh, exact reason. Uh, Michael, uh, anything else you'd like to add? This is so very interesting to see, and I know it's obviously a launching pad for Blue Origin in this way. Anything else you'd like to know before I let you go? Um, no, well, I think I think one thing that's interesting is that this was the first Mars launch in like more than five years. So it's just, it's just pretty special, you know, like a lot of the focus is on Blue Origin and, and rightfully so this is a huge milestone for them, but it's also just kind of nice to have another mission to Mars, like in that, yeah, going, going up. Um, like, like the last one that launched toward Mars was the Perseverance Rover. And that, that was more than five years ago. So it's just nice to see NASA, which has had like a lot of budget problems, you know, they're, they're, they're facing potentially like a 24% cut to their budget and a 50% nearly cut to their science budget. It's good to see them getting like another Mars mission up off the ground and um, doing what, what they're able to do. So yeah, 
So it's always good to see another Mars mission launch. Yeah, it's always good for some of the optics of this to see it be successful, to potentially get the movement for like the funding you mentioned. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Uh, so very fascinating, so very complicated, but obviously so very important as well. We appreciate your time. Yep, yep, sure thing, no problem.